Hey everyone, uh, it's been a few years and my opinion has changed, so I've decided to update my Star Wars ranking. Um, I'm only going to be including the movies, not the shows. Uh, maybe I'll do those another time. But anyway, starting off at the bottom, with number 12, is Star Wars The Clone Wars. The Clone Wars TV show is great, and, well, unlike last time, I actually know why this movie is so bad. It's because it's not a movie. It's four episodes of the show combined into a movie. And it doesn't work. Because it's trying to do too much at once. It's setting up too many subplots. They all get followed up on in the TV show, but for the movie's purpose, it just makes it feel overstuffed. Um, the acting is all pretty good. Uh, and there's some awesome action, like when the ATTEs are scaling the cliff. That's really about it. This <sighs> Making this a movie was a mistake, but it counts. It's technically a movie. It was in theaters. I know because I saw it in theaters. So here it is. A score is two out of five. Number 11 is episode two, Attack of the Clones. Look, you can say what you want about George Lucas, but the CGI in this movie is actually impressive. Seriously, the shot of the clones and the droids fighting in the dust caused by the crashed ship is like one of the most beautiful shots in all of Star Wars. <laughs> action is good, the music is great, and at least some of the acting is good. Hayden Christensen is not very good, but I don't blame him for that. I blame George Lucas. George Lucas is a great creative mind. He is wonderful when it comes to stuff like world building and action scenes and stuff like that. But when it comes to acting and directing actors, he's not very good. The only reason that the acting in the first Star Wars was any good was because he was dealing with more talented actors than he was here. And Mark Hamill. Okay, I joke, but let's be honest, Mark Hamill's performance, well, we'll get there. Anyway, anytime I talk about the acting in the prequels and I refer to them in a negative light, please know that all of the blame for that goes squarely on George Lucas not the actors. Uh, this movie has a lot of issues, and a lot of them fall into two categories. Plot conveniences and inattention to detail. As far as plot convenience goes, the poison dart is both plot convenience and plot hole. Why the hell would Mandalorian bounty hunter Jango Fett use a weapon that could be traced back to anywhere other than Mandalore? It only exists to get Obi-Wan to Kamino. Second, is just a definition of plot convenience. Obi-Wan arrives on Geonosis and immediately stumbles upon the villains having a secret meeting. How, how fucking convenient. Just once, I'd love for the heroes to overhear the villains talking about something completely unrelated to, to the plot, like where they're going for dinner that night, or the birthday party that they had the previous day. You know, it would make them feel like actual people, as opposed to just plot devices. And also, as far as inattention to detail goes, when Anakin and Obi-Wan are in the Republic gunship, 
The doors of the gunship are open, so their hair should be blowing in the wind, but it's not. Look out for that! It's Dooku! Shoot him down! But with all that aside, this is still a good movie. It is still an enjoyable movie, it's just it is the least enjoyable of all the live action ones. My score is 3 out of 5. Number 10 is Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. This movie has a lot of the same problems as the other prequels, but the one that's more prevalent here than the others is the acting. And once again, do not blame the actors, blame George Lucas. Jake Lloyd honestly gets a bad rap. Look at this cast. Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, Samuel L. Jackson, Kiera Knightley, Natalie Portman, and they are all playing blocks of wood. Some of them are playing those blocks of wood quite well, but they're still playing blocks of wood. Uh, the CGI uh, is not great. They definitely improved on that by the time of episode two, but the practical effects are solid, and this was back when they were still doing mostly practical effects. Uh, the action is really good, the music is great, and Darth Maul is an underrated badass. Ray Park, you will always be famous. There's really nothing you can say about this movie that hasn't been said already, and, and a lot of it is true. There's too much exposition, the pacing is off, yada yada yada. That is all true. I still enjoy this movie. It is still at least good. My score is 3 out of 5. Funnily enough, my number 9 is Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. I understand most of this movie's criticisms, and I agree with a lot of them. It's too reliant on nostalgia, um, it suffers from the fact that the filmmakers did not have this trilogy's overarching plot panned out. And it also suffers from the fact that they tried to just act like The Last Jedi never happened. Finn's character arc doesn't get resolved, which just feels like amateur work. And Rey's... well, the stuff with Rey is a mixed bag. I like some of what we got from it, but I also kind of wish they had kept The Last Jedi's reveal that she was nobody. Or that her parents were nobody, at least. With all that aside, I still like this movie. Um, with Rey's heritage and that bullshit aside, the moment where she suddenly uses Force Lightning is fucking awesome. Now, yes, I know in Legends, Force Lightning is something you have to learn, but Legends is not canon anymore, as much as I wish the Darth Bane books were. The acting is solid, the action is good, the music is great, and best of all, we finally get Rey, Finn, and Poe all going on an adventure together, something we didn't get in episodes 7 and 8, and I will, so I will give them credit for that. And also, I would argue that Ian McDermott gives arguably his best performance as Palpatine in this movie. My score is 3 out of 5. Number 8 is Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. 
There's a reason pretty much everyone considers this the best of the prequels. It's the one that George Lucas actually cared about. I'm not kidding. Apparently George Lucas only wanted to make the one movie, this movie, but he realized that if he only made one movie then there would be some plot holes, so he had to make episodes one and two to fix that. To be fair, it mostly worked. The action, the acting, and the CGI are all the best in the prequel trilogy. Even Hayden Christensen is better here than he was in Attack of the Clones. He's still not great, but he's better. When Padme tells him she's pregnant, you see his facial acting is on point. He goes through every emotion someone would go through upon finding out that their spouse is pregnant. I, I'm tired of all this deception. I don't care if they know we're married. Anakin, don't say things like that. Are you all right? You're trembling. What's going on? Something wonderful has happened. Annie, I'm pregnant. That's... That's, one, that's wonderful. What are we gonna do? We're not gonna worry about anything right now. All right? This is a happy moment. The happiest moment of my life. Um, it has some of the same issues as the previous movies. Um, some of the acting still isn't great. Natalie Portman especially. Honestly, I think, and again, blame George Lucas for this. Blame George Lucas and blame the writing, but Natalie Portman actually got worse over the course of the trilogy. Or at least, I don't know if her acting got worse. No, actually no, her acting did not get worse. But I don't like what they did with her character. She started out as like a badass, and even in episode two she was still a badass, but now she's the giggling wife in her nightie. I don't like it. And I think it's because Natalie Portman is one of those actors where their performance is maybe not entirely dependent, but largely dependent on the director. A good director can get a great performance out of her. A poor director will, will only get a bad performance out of her. And George Lucas is somewhere in the middle in that regard. Uh, but the opening scene is one of the best in the franchise. Like, yes, it's all CGI, but it's still really fucking cool. Just because it's CGI doesn't automatically make it worse. And the final lightsaber duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan is legitimately one of the best fights in the entire franchise. Not just lightsaber duels, the be one of the best fights in general. My score is 3.5 out of 5. Number 7. Is Solo a Star Wars story? I have one complaint about this movie. I used to have two, but now I don't really consider nobody was asking for it a valid complaint, because there have been lots of great movies that nobody was asking for. Now, my one complaint with this movie is that it never really does anything to justify its own existence. That's it. Alden Ehrenreich ended up being like the perfect casting for young Han. He doesn't quite look like Han, he doesn't quite sound like Han, but he feels like Han. And any, any character traits of Han's, of Harrison Ford as Han Solo, any of those character traits that he's lacking, that's not bad acting it's because it's a younger version of him and he hasn't adopted those traits yet likewise donald glover was perfect casting for young lando the quick scene where he's recording his personal journal with a less talented actor that scene would have been cringy and it almost certainly would have been axed uh woody harrelson and amelia clark are both really good and paul bettany is pretty damn great he is an underrated villain phoebe waller bridge is really good as l3 even if you don't like the character her performance is solid Didn't plan on it being so soon. Of course, now you've got a problem. Big problem. You happen to notice that freighter down there? You know what's on it? About 30 hired guns. 
All I gotta do is give him the signal, you're surrounded. The visual aesthetic is stunning and manages to stand out in a franchise full of visually stunning aesthetics. Uh, the plot is good. The writing is solid. There's some good reveals. The action is better than it gets credit for, especially the final fight. And the final fight is actually the biggest reason I love this movie. Every other Star Wars fight has a big, epic, climactic battle. This movie's climactic fight is confined to the villain's office. We start with five characters plus a couple guards, then the actual fight only involves three of them. It's the exact opposite of what most Star Wars climaxes are going for, and it works. My score is 3.5 out of 5. Number 6 is Episode 7, The Force Awakens. The fact that there are still people who call Rey a Mary Sue baffles me. Why can she use the lightsaber the first time she tries? Because she's been fighting with a staff for most of her life, and if you look carefully, she uses her saber the same way she uses the staff. Hell, that's outright confirmed in The Last Jedi when they actually show her training. There are legitimate criticisms of this movie, but then there are also criticisms that are not so legit. Why can Finn hold his own against Kylo Ren? A. Sith like playing with their food, so Kylo is messing with him. And or B. Kylo was injured and or getting cocky. I mean, Kylo got shot. You you all saw earlier during the this, the fight at Maz Kanata's place when Han borrows the Chewie's bowcaster and blows up a couple stormtroopers with it. Hey, can I try that? I like this thing. Kylo Ren got shot with that weapon, and he walked it off. So he is not at 100% for that fight. That is why Finn was able to hold his own. But also it's because he wasn't. Kylo was injured, but he was also messing with Finn. He was playing with him, toying with him. Anywho, the acting is solid across the board. The action is some of the best in the franchise. It's great for different reasons than the action in the prequel is great. It's slower than the fights in the prequels. But, like, it feels more raw, less choreographed. Traitor! That lightsaber... It belongs to me. Come get it! music is great, and Kylo Ren is a fucking badass. Uh, yes, the plot is very similar to A New Hope, maybe a little too similar. It does borrow some elements from Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and it adds some new stuff, but I feel like they could have added more new stuff. My score is 4 out of 5. Number 5 is the original Star Wars. I don't remember this, but apparently the first time my dad showed me this movie, I was like six, I think. When Darth Vader first appeared, I asked, who's that? He said, Darth Vader. Is he the bad guy? Yeah. So apparently even back then, I was familiar with certain tropes. This movie is a classic, but it's not exactly perfect. The acting is a little hit and miss. Mark Hamill is not great. He gets better throughout the trilogy. He's not bad, but Luke comes off a little whiny sometimes. Kind of sounds familiar, actually. Anyway, Carrie Fisher is good, and Harrison Ford is very good. By his own admission, George Lucas is not very good at writing dialogue, and it shows. The main reason the dialogue isn't as bad as it was in the prequels is because the cast did a lot of improvising. 
Uh, that, however, that did not stop a few cringy lines from staying in, like, not nah me, sister. Some of the VFX don't really hold up, but they were great for the time, and a lot of them do actually hold up. The action is good, the music is excellent, and there are just so many iconic moments. Come on, buddy, we're not out of this yet. In, kid? Okay, stay sharp. There's a reason this was the second movie to ever make a hundred million at the box office. For those of you who don't know, the first was Jaws. Score is four out of five. Number four is episode eight, The Last Jedi. I get why this movie is so divisive. I understand some of the criticisms and I agree with some of them. I just don't care. I still love this movie. A lot of the complaints, and this has been the case even with the stuff that has come out since The Last Jedi, like Ahsoka and The Acolyte, there are just idiots in the fandom complaining about things that don't make sense. Or, sorry, making complaints that don't make sense. And some of them are just hypocritical. There are people who complain the bombers in the opening scene are highly impractical. First of all, no shit, Sherlock. Second of all, not quite. I don't know if this is outright confirmed in the movie, but they're not gravity bombs. They're not dropping them with gravity. It's magnetism. They're drop. It's they're magnetic bombs. So there's that. But also, is this your first Star Wars movie? When it comes to ship design, since the very beginning, Star Wars has always prioritized looking cool over practicality. The AT-ATs are like the worst possible version of a tank. Their legs are too tall, which gives them a high center of gravity, which makes it easy to knock them over if you can hit them hard enough. They're too slow, and all of their weapons are located in the head, which means they can only shoot in like, in like the 30 to 45 degrees of space in front of them. Uh, people complain that Luke going into hiding after his failure is out of character. And are you kidding me? Going into hiding after a self-perceived failure is a goddamn Jedi tradition at this point. Yoda did it after he got beat by Sidious. Obi-Wan did it after failing to save Anakin from the dark side and also to keep an eye on Luke. Even Rey did it in episode nine. Anyway, onto the actual movie. Mark Hamill gives arguably his best performance as Luke in the franchise. And I have to give him major props for playing Luke in a way he didn't quite agree with. The throne room fight is awesome for the same reason the Force Awakens lightsaber fight is awesome and also why the original trilogy's lightsaber fights are awesome. They're character and narrative driven. them from like a real plot a real life fighting standpoint they're not the best obviously it's a movie movie fights never look completely real even the ones that do get a lot of shit right get some things wrong because that's just how movies work and yes there is a minor continuity error but it goes by so quickly that i don't even notice and i don't even care 
The cinematography is excellent. The editing is exactly how fight scenes should be edited. Lots of long shots, no unnecessary close-ups. And plus, we finally get to see someone take advantage of the fact that lightsabers can be turned on and off at will. It's about damn time. This movie is about learning from failed plans. Every time someone makes a plan, it goes wrong and they have to improvise and adapt while learning from their mistakes. I love it. And the warp speed kamikaze is awesome and now we are nothing to the contrary. Scores 4.5 out of 5. Number 3 is Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. This movie has the best action, VFX, and acting of the original trilogy. The Ewoks are awesome. Anyone who thinks they suck can kiss my ass. Freeze! <laughs> We surrender. George Lucas is great as a producer, as a creative mind, but he needs someone else in the director's chair to guide his vision. That's a big part of why I prefer this movie over A New Hope. And this is a rare instance of a trilogy that doesn't go out on a low note. And it's also why I'm not super harsh on this sequel trilogy for not having everything planned out, because this trilogy didn't have shit planned out either. There are retcons in here. Darth Vader being Luke's father was a retcon. Leia being Luke's sister was a retcon. And people are acting like retcons are a new thing in this series. Fuck no. They've been around since 1980. I thought I would have more to say, but I d really don't. It's, this, this is just a great fucking movie. The score is 4.5 out of 5. Number 2 is Rogue One, a Star Wars story. This is the peak of Disney Star Wars movies. This is the best Star Wars prequel. My one and only problem with this movie is that Jin starts off as a passive protagonist, which is the most boring kind of protagonist. However, she becomes more active throughout the film, so that helps. The action is some of the best in the franchise. The battle over the shield gate is one of the best space battles in the entire franchise. Like, compare the space battle in this movie to the space battle in The Rise of Skywalker, and the difference is night and day. Darth Vader's hallway fight scene is just one of the best scenes in the entire franchise. Felicity Jones and Diego Luna are solid. Donnie Yen and Zhang Wen, hope I said that right, are great. Alan Tudyk is fantastic. Fucking love K2SO. And I also love the moment when the rebel ships are starting to flee and Vader's ship just pops out of hyperspace to block them like... Surprise, cockpits! Great stuff. My score is 5 out of 5. Finally, number one is episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. What can I say? Sometimes I agree with the popular opinion. This movie is a goddamn classic for a goddamn reason. Mark Hamill is good. Carrie Fisher is better. Harrison Ford and Billy Dee Williams are great. The Battle of Hoth is legitimately one of the best science fiction battles of all time. And the fact that it was largely done with stop motion is just even more impressive. Five, 
nothing. We're on our way. All right, boys, keep tight now. Luke, I have no approach vector. I'm not set. Steady, Dak. Attack pattern Delta. Go now. All right, coming in. Bobby, you still with me? Uh, the action overall is just great. The music is outstanding. The writing is solid. The VFX are really fucking good. <sighs> what more is there to say that hasn't been said already? Score is 5 out of 5. Hey everyone, what's your ranking? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe and all that. If you don't like the video, tell me why. Try to be constructive. Then subscribe anyway. You'll be notified when I upload a new video. Watch that tell me why that one sucks. Or maybe where I've improved, whatever the case may be. That's all for now. Stay safe in these crazy times.